There are currently more than two dozen political parties registered with Elections Ontario, many of them considered fringe groups. But an expert says the new Blue Party and Ontario Party are in a category of their own. I would describe more as um, splinter parties uh, because they have been founded by um, people who've been elected under the conservative banner and then were removed for caucus. Uh, and so they've gone on to create their own parties. They are running candidates in virtually every riding in the province, uh, which says something about their organizational capacity, their popularity and their funding to be able to pull that off. Among the new Blue Party's promises to end COVID-19 mandates to cut the HST by 3% and stopping, quote, woke activism by removing gender identity education from schools. Fight for our freedom. Fight for our families. Fight for our faith. The Ontario Party is campaigning on religious freedoms and free speech, particularly around empowering anti-abortion groups, also pledging to stop, quote, transgender ideologues and prevent non-reversible treatments or procedures for youth under 18. Both parties are also campaigning against critical race theory in schools, despite CRT not being part of the Ontario curriculum. I think in a word, it's, it's absolutely horrifying. Uh, I see these groups, uh, you know, language like gender ideology, language like banning mention of critical race theory in schools. These are attacks on marginalized communities. These are efforts to create a social environment environment in our schools and in our communities where trans, gender diverse young people are stigmatized and shamed. The new Blue Party officially registered in 2021 is led by Jim Karahalios, husband of Cambridge MPP Belinda Karahalios. Belinda was booted from the PC caucus in 2020 and is running under the new blue banner. For voting against the Reopening Ontario Act otherwise known as the lockdown bill. The Ontario Party is led by Derek Sloan, the former member of parliament who was kicked out of the Federal Conservative Caucus last year after it was reported he took donations from a white nationalist. It appears to me that they have a particularly sort of libertarian bent, uh, small government, you know, you know, government out of my life. Queer Vote, a coalition of over 40 LGBTQ2S plus organizations and allies, says the platform send a message normalizing these agendas, as the All past the few biggest, years have seen a rise in anti-trans hate. And it tells them that their messages are okay, that their bigotry is okay. Gleefully trying to repeal uh, foundational human rights or initiatives to protect people's health and well-being, particularly not in our schools. Attention now turns to Election Day Thursday and how fringe or splinter parties will fare against other candidates. I think one interesting thing that can happen with parties that take a, you know, a view that is not in the mainstream or not represented in any of the current political parties is it can attract actually people who may not have voted before. We saw that, you know, again, south of the border with some of the people who turned out to vote for Trump. For City News, I'm Faiza Amin.